I will change the look of this long glass vase. I want to add some spice to it and make it more trendy. I was inspired by the popular jacket pattern. You can find a lot of it on Pinterest or stores like Anthropology or Urban Outfitters. To create the pattern, I will be using plastic canvas. I have some leftovers from my previous projects and I thought it would be great to use it up. I'm going with green and white yarn. I work with the plastic canvas I already have, so I've counted the holes and decided that each square will be 4 times 4 holes. I put the yarn through the needle, double it up and make knot at the end. I make one square at a time. I start from the back of the canvas and go 4 holes up and push the needle back. And then again from the bottom up and to the back. Once the first square is done, I'm jumping over four squares to the left and start making another square. I think this is the quickest and tidiest way of doing it. You don't have to change the yarn after each square and you don't make unnecessary knots at the back. Once the first row of the white squares are done, I took a green yarn and started to create green squares. Again, I start from the back and make four diagonal lines. Because I double my yarn up, I only have to go once through each hole. First row is done and I jump row higher. When you run out of yarn, just make the knot at the end and put the new one through the needle. Because it's jacket design, I start second row with other color than I did on the first row. And then I push it through the same hole where the other yarn is. This way you cover all of the plastic parts and it looks more like one piece. Once it's all covered, I turn it and cut off any excess yarn. I also cut the plastic canvas a little bit lower. You can glue it to the vase if you want. I'm going to sew it together and then put it over the vase. This way you can always remove it when you want to clean the vase or change the water for your flowers. I also wrap the yarn around the top and bottom edge for better finish. I've decided to change the look of this small vase which I've bought in charity shop. I will upgrade its look by using Erdre clay. I take small piece of the clay and start kneading it between my hands. Clay becomes nice, soft and easy to work with. I divide it into small equal pieces and then I'm kneading each of them again. Then I start rolling it between my hands and move it on the table. I take this piece and place it next to the vase creating little handle on the side. I take another piece of clay and create handle for the opposite side. I try to roll it to the same thickness as the first one. I take slightly smaller piece of clay and I start creating the chain, one loop at a time. I roll it and then connect two ends together. You can make small cuts and use water so it will stick together better. Then I repeat the process creating more loops for my chain. I try to make each loop the same size. I take one end and put it through the first loop and then connect the ends together.
I check if the chain is long enough and the handles are in the right shape as that's the last moment when you can change it or fix it. I smooth out the surface of the clay with water and leave it till fully dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to paint my vase. I decided to mix brown and black paint together. It creates really nice soil color. And to create some texture on my vase, I'm adding baking soda to my paint. Using soft brush, I apply this paint all over the vase. Once the vase and clay is dry, I can finally attach this chain to my vase. But before that, I'm taking sanding paper and sand down some of the edges of the handle so they will fit nicely to the vase. Using the same paint, I've also painted handles and the chain. To attach handles, I will be using super glue. I think this is the best choice as it will hold it nicely and strong, especially that I'm gluing it to the painted and textured surface. I hold it for a few seconds, making sure the glue starts working and then I go around with the paint to cover up any imperfections. And the chain vase is ready. I really like how it turned out and the soily color of it. You can always uh, use polymer clay and I believe the finish would look even more tidy and stylish. For my next project, I've decided to change the look of this thrifted vase. A red color is actually trendy for 2023, however I'm not that keen on it. Never was and I don't think I will. I like the simple shape of this vase, so for that reason I bought it. Green is also a trendy color, so let's paint the vase in it. I'm using acrylic paint and with the white brush I covered the whole vase. I like that it comes out matte. There is a lot of painting in this video, but recently I found it very relaxing. With thin and round paintbrush I start painting the pattern. Very simple, organic looking flowers and leaves. Something what looks good but doesn't necessarily require a lot of artistic skills. I put quite a thick layer of the paint and in some places I even go twice with it. Between the flowers and leaves I add small dots to fill up the space. I've picked up this ceramic vase which I bought in thrift store. Of course the size and the shape doesn't matter so you can choose whichever vase you like. Because my vase is glazed and plaster might not stick that well to it, I will be also using this joint tape. I rub the most part of my vase with it. Plastering tape will also prevent the cracks on the plaster of Paris. It's really easy to tape it as one side is sticky. It don't have to be done perfectly as it will be all covered anyway. Only make sure that the tape sticks well to the surface. I live by the sea so for me it was easy to gather this collection. I've got in here some sea glass in different colors, cheap pieces of old tiles, small stones and selection of few different shells. 
You might be able to buy similar stuff in craft store or next time when you go on your holidays, remember to bring few beach souvenirs with you. I take plastic container and start mixing the plaster powder with water. The ideal ratio for plaster of Paris is two parts of plaster to part of water, but I suggest to follow instructions from your plaster's brand. In this case, I want to create quite thicker consistency than usual. I don't want it to be too watery because it will start running down on the vase. I also make small patch at the time as this plaster sets so quickly and I won't have enough time to attach the small bits to it. Make sure there is no lumps and you can start moving plaster onto the vase. You can use some kind of spatula, I'm using my hand for more organic look. And as I said before, I apply plaster only on the small part of vase at the time. And then I start attaching my sea glass, tiles and shells on the wet plaster. Press each piece lightly down, making sure it sticks and won't come off later. I place all the bits in a random, irregular design. If there is some part with visible tape, I simply add more plaster. And I carry on with this process all around the vase, putting small amount of plaster at a time. I also put extra plaster at the top to make this vase look like it's fully made out of plaster. This is the project inspired by this photo which lovely Daphne sent to me. Thank you for your idea and support. I was looking for glass vase which is round and straight and then I found this storage container which is perfect. It's slightly shorter than spaghetti jar. For this project I've decided to use polymer clay. I take small piece at the time and roll it out flat to the same thickness. Polymer clay is much harder than air dry clay so it takes a bit longer to make it flat. You can easily use air dry clay for this project and it will work as good. I take my round cutter and create one big circle. I measure its center and then cut it in half. To smooth any imperfection or uneven edges with polymer clay you have to just tap and rub it slightly. Water won't help in this case. All together I've created six circles which I divided in half. You can see that I've used different color of clay. First of all I will spray paint it anyway. Secondly the white clay I was using was Fimo Professional which is much harder than the soft version. I found hard to work with it so I swapped it for the other one. I place them flat on the baking tray and bake them for 30 minutes at 110 Celsius degrees. After baking and cooling down, it was time to attach them to the vase. But before that, I decided to sand down the straight side of each piece. It will just make it nice, even and easier to glue to the glass. To attach the clay pieces to the glass, I'm using super glue. I spread it along the straight side and then move it onto the jar. Hold it for a few seconds, making sure the glue starts working. At first, I glue four pieces at the same height and the same distance between each other. Then I glue two pieces slightly lower than the previous ones and I repeat it all around the vase.
I gave it two coats of white spray paint. You can always just use paint and brush, but because of the sticking out parts, I thought sprayer will be better and quicker choice. To create the splash paint effect, I'm using brown paint and a wooden stick with pointy end. In here, you can also use toothbrush and create the real splash effect. I simply create irregular dots around the vase. To create this boho style vase, you will need any kind of size of the glass vase or you can even use a jar. For the base, I will be using this IKEA cork mat. And to create the whole construction, I will be using wooden barbecue skewers. At first, I have to measure how long I will need them to be. They will go from the bottom up to the edge of the vase plus few extra centimeters for better finish. I always cut the part with the more pointy end. Then I use this one piece as a template and cut more of them. I've got quite a few of them to cover the whole mat. To glue them all I'm using hot glue. I take one piece at a time and glue it to the mat's edge. For this part I'm using the end of the stick which was cut. This will be all covered anyway, so I save the better end for the top of my vase. I glue them all around this edge in the same distance between each stick. Once it's all attached, I can glue the vase to the cork. Make sure to place it in the exact middle. And then I glue each stick to the edge of my vase. Just small amount of the glue. And again try to keep the same distance. I wrap cord on the bottom of my vase to cover the glued part and also give it more details. And two cords at the top. Next vase is super easy to create. I've got this glass vase which was just lying around my house. I'm not the biggest fan of glass transparent items at the moment so I thought it would be a great idea to change the look of it as the shape of this vase is quite nice. I want to create more boho look so the hemp yarn will be perfect for that. Natural colors and materials are also trendy right now. I'm basically going to cover the whole vase with this rope. And to attach it I'm using Mod Podge. You can use hot glue if that's easier for you. I've decided to use Mod Podge which is less messy uh, than hot glue and even if the yarn gets dirty with the Mod Podge it will dry transparent so you won't even notice it. I apply the glue with the brush small parts at the time. The yarn is thin and the vase is tall so it's quite time consuming process. When I go around with this yarn I try to pull it and also glue it very close to the previous row. I left the bottom of the vase empty and on the top I've added extra row of yarn to cover the edge. Now using white acrylic paint I'm going to paint about one third of my vase. First I create the line around. You can use some tape to make it straight but it's quite easy just to go with the yarn as a guide. Hemp yarn absorbs quite a big amount of this paint so I will probably have to paint it twice. Easy idea if you want to bring some uh, earthy colors to your room, very boho style as well. You can use any shape of the vase, good idea to update some old unwanted decor. And by adding white paint it makes it more interesting piece.
I had some leftover Mod Podge mixture from the previous project, I've decided to use it up and try something different instead of throwing it away. This time I want to tin this decorative bottle. I really like the look of the old amber bottles. I've also created the construction from top of plastic bottle which will hold nicely my glass bottle upside down. And to make brown color out of the blue one, I'm adding orange food coloring. This time I will color the inside of the glass, so I simply pour all of my mixture to the glass bottle. I start moving it around so the mixture runs down and covers the whole wall. I take it upside down and move it to my plastic holder. As you can see, all the excess paint is dropping down. And again, after just few hours of drying, the tint glass is ready. I'm not 100% happy with the result, so what I would recommend is not to water down the Mod Podge this time. It worked fine with the first project, but I think thicker consistency would be better for this bottle. I add some sand to the mixture of cement and water. I stir it well to quite runny consistency. Remember, always wear a mask when mixing the cement. For this project, you can easily use some old towels. Size of the final vase will depend on the size of the towel you are going to use. I fold it twice and then cut rounded shape from one corner to another. Take some tall items you don't mind throwing away later on and create tower. It has to be tall enough so the towel doesn't touch the bottom. I place the cloth inside the backhand and cover it all with the mixture. Make sure it's all dirty and you can't see the color of your towel. Find the middle and move the cloth onto the tower. Change the shapes of the folds to your preferences. You can also add some more of the cement around the cloth. It will make it a bit stronger and give it smoother finish. And in this position I leave it till fully dry. If you want, you can remove all the parts of your tower. Or if, like me, you have used plastic containers, you can leave one of them at the bottom and then be actually able to place some fresh flowers inside this vase. For modern look, I painted it whole white. Last but not least, I will try to recreate this patterned glass vase from H&M. I believe it's from the Easter collection and in one point it was out of stock. So I will show you how to make one on the budget and you can choose what shape of vase you want. I'm using my old one which after a few years needs some touch or refresh. Before painting, I clean it again with the alcohol. Looking at the original piece, the white color looks very cloudy and not that rich. And to achieve similar effect, I will paint it from the inside. The opening on this vase is big enough for my hand and paintbrush. It's again an regular pattern, more of the abstract art. I've decided to paint the bottom part of the vase all the way around and then move higher and higher. This way I don't touch uh, any of the fresh paint with my hand. I also try to put thicker layers of paint at once so I won't have to repeat it later again. 
I've run out of my white paint, so I had to order another one. I've ordered different one as the previous one came with the set of other colors and I didn't really need them. But I've thought white paint is a white paint, it's for glass and after baking is this washer safe as well. You couldn't see any difference in color between two paints. Only problem was that this paint was more runny than the other one and because of uh, my thick layers the paint started to run down. But I've rescued it with cotton buds. All my glass, which was painted with glass paint after 24 hours of drying, had to go to oven. According to the instructions from my type of paint, I have to bake them for 2 hours at 80 Celsius degrees. But it will of course depend on the paint brand, so always read the instruction. H&M inspired vase came out perfectly, looks so similar to the original piece. It's a great way of updating your old or thrifted glass vase.